Hello everyone, Rachel Weaver here. I'm on faculty and staff at Lighthouse Writers Workshop. I've been making a series of videos in which I ask Jenny Shank to review books for us. Jenny is on faculty at Lighthouse Writers Workshop as well as on faculty at Regis University's MFA program. Um, Jenny has been professionally reviewing books for over 20 years. She has reviewed over a thousand books for publications like the Dallas Morning News, High Country News, Los Angeles Times, and the Minneapolis Star Review. All right, Jenny, are you ready for to tell us about this next book? The next book I want to re recommend is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, and it's coming out on June 2nd. So depending on when this runs, you might have to pre-order it, or maybe you can go out and get it um, from your favorite independent bookstore, right? Um, <laughs> so Britt Bennett is an author I found with her first book, The Mothers. It came out only a couple years ago. Joy with the high quality books. Um, <laughs> so um, when I found the mothers, I was she's just a, a distinct voice, a distinct vision. There's something about her writing. I know it's kind of the achievement to compare a young uh, black writer to Courtney Moore. But this is like the only writer I give that comparison to because there's something about how she taps into, I guess, the subconscious and um, hope. Well, isn't explicitly used folklore, but there's something deep running under there, a current that goes in all her stories. And after reading her second novel, I think I'm going to have to just follow her and read everything she writes from now on. Um, the Vanishing Half, it starts in 1958 in this strange town of Mallard, Louisiana, and it's comprised almost entirely of light-skinned Black people. Um, after, after years of being persecuted by white people in, or in the South, they made their own town, but then they in turn um, are prejudiced against people with darker skin today. And I was just gonna read a paragraph introducing this strange town from the near the beginning of the book. In fact, she says, it was a strange town. Mallard is named after the ring-necked ducks living in the rice fields and marshes, a town that like any other, was more idea than place. The idea arrived to Alphonse de Clear in 1848 as he stood in the sugarcane fields he inherited from the father who once owned him. The father, now dead, and now freed son, wished to build something on those acres of land that would last for centuries to come, a town for men like him who would never be accepted as white but refused to be treated like Negroes, a third place. So this town springs up, people intermarry, and they're all light, light-skinned black people. Then uh, one year, two teenage sisters, Desiree and Stella, go missing. They, they leave the town, they go missing. Desiree dis disappears into the world and she starts passing for white, which I think is a really fascinating um, thread that Brent Bennett has explored. Um, Stella goes and gets married. Um, but she rejects the whole colorism of the town, and she married a very dark African-American man. And her daughter, when she brings her back, Jude, she's very dark. And so when she comes back to the town after her marriage goes awry, um, no one ex accepts Jude, and they're just, like, um, really mean to her <laughs> for, being, for being dark. Um, Jude eventually gets a track scholarship to run at UCLA in 1978, and... While she's, so while she's in Los Angeles, she really likes the anonymity of her visor. She's not like sticking out like she was in Mallard. Um, and she befriends these other people there that have come to Los Angeles to transform. Um, there's one, a science teacher who performs twice a month as a, as a drag queen. And then um, Reese, who becomes Jude's boyfriend, was born a woman, but became to LA to be, become a man. And he used uh, hormones from like, bodybuilders at Muscle Beach to, to um, start making his transformation. And then um, while Jude is working a catering job, she sees Stella, who she record, or no, she sees, which was the one that goes missing? Stella is the one passing for white, I think. Yeah. <laughs> she sees Stella and she recognizes her, of course, because she looks exactly like her mother, her twin. And then she really like kind of pursues her through her daughter and her daughter doesn't know that she's black at all. She's been raised this privileged white girl in, in Los Angeles. Um, and 
it's just really fascinating. Like so much stuff is brought up. And I think the thing to learn as a writer from this is a couple of things. One thing is, I think she must have gotten curious about the phenomenon of people passing for white. And she dug into a story to um, just kind of figure out what would that be like? And she really examines the emotional implications of shutting off your entire family because if anyone knows you from your past life or gets in touch with you, the whole thing is blown. Um, so it's really an intense thing to do. And the other thing I think you can learn from this is there's one coincidence in the story that you're kind of like, come on, please, that she, that dude um, encountered Stella in Los Angeles. But I'm like, I think because the book is so good and it's written so well and nothing is like shirked, sure, she gets away with using that one coincidence. So if you're writing a book that you're like, I can't make this thing work, please just buy it. I think you get away with one. <laughs> If you write the rest of it really well, um, I'm not going to criticize that choice because what happened next was so fascinating and just where we wanted the book to go. So I think sometimes we pick on our own ideas for plot and say, oh. but um, maybe just write into it and see, is it really that stupid or does it work? Um, so yeah, I think it ends up being really brilliant um, and just fascinating and just think about the psychology of all these characters, how they've been treated by others because of their skin color and what they're hiding and their secrets. It's fascinating. So check out uh, The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett.